Hey guys, Alpha Fish here. Welcome back to another Lords Mobile video. And today we are going to be talking about heroes. So I have featured heroes in several of my videos just because they're useful for so many different things. And uh, they do give a little bit of boost for just about everything, depending on which hero we're talking about. So uh, someone asked me to do a video just on heroes like just only heroes so that's what we're going to be looking at today so like I said heroes can be used for many different things um, every hero has like its specific thing that it's that it benefits so uh, depending on what kind of build you're wanting to do for for your account for your castle uh, may change which heroes you want to upgrade first. So, um, your basic heroes for, say, Colosseum, if you want to have a, a good defense and offense for Colosseum as free to play, um, if you like, for if you're trying to get gems and you want a good standing in a Colosseum, um, I recommend going with Rose Knight. Tracker, uh, Demon Slayer definitely because Demon Slayer will oftentimes take out your enemy's healer. Speaking of which, you do want to have um, Prima Donna as well, and really the the fifth the fifth character that you use uh, is really up to you. I've seen people use Child of Light. I've seen people use C Squire um, or Trickster but my personal favorite is just throwing where's she at? is throwing Scarlet Bolt in there because Scarlet Bolt is um, is a debuffer so uh, Scarlet Bolt will remove a bunch of um, will remove a bunch of defense on one enemy whenever Scarlet does her special which is really good because when you have Tracker Tracker will more than likely one shot the character that Scarlet Bolt is fighting so um, that is my favorite set I use that for my alts and and my main and whatever and sometimes I will change it depending on who I'm trying to take down but usually I'm not at all about getting to the highest rank in Coliseum as I can I usually just try to stay above a certain limit so that I'm getting a decent amount of gems uh, so that's pretty much that for Coliseum um, but in the beginning of the game you don't have Coliseum unlocked I don't think you unlock Coliseum until like was it like Castle 12 or 15 or something like that? Uh, or 17? I can't remember what. I can't remember when it is that you unlock Coliseum. But if you're doing, uh, per se, if you're doing a hyper, and you're trying to do stone hyper, uh, your interest might be in C Squire because C Squire gives stone supply management stone production 150 percent which is a really good chunk of uh, production okay so these heroes have many different things that you can use them for so let, let's look through their skills a little bit so rose knight has wood production okay timber production 150 percent and Rose Knight you don't really get until later on in the game um, but it's still a useful hero because it has army attack but we'll get to the attack boost stuff here in a little bit uh, right now uh, we're going to continue to look for oh look another one production alright tracker has ore production 150 percent and these you have to get their badges up and I believe you also need their rankings up as well to, to get the higher percents. So, um, oh, of course, Tracker you don't get until later on in the game. 
just because you have to have a certain amount of um, hero upgrades and a certain amount of hero levels like leader levels in order to reach the um, stages that you can get the badges for these characters for these heroes so gold production is always good no matter what account it is even if it's not a straight gold production build because gold will always be a tricker uh, tr trickle gold will always be a trickle doesn't matter if you're hypering it or not it'll always be a trickle and gold gold farming is done over multiple accounts not just one okay whereas other resources it's easier or it's more it's it's more viable to hyper a uh, another resource with just one account like it's more viable to try to make one account a gold hyper doesn't work very well so look another stone production oh wait we already talked about this character <laughs> so food production of course this character you don't get until later on in the game um, demon slayer he doesn't have any productions no productions no productions no productions so we're gonna keep skipping okay so here's a good here's a good character you get you get um, death archer beginning of the game like it's you start out with death archer and oath knight alright so um, or oath keeper not oath knight oath keeper so death archer gives ore production and ore is one of the ore is the hardest besides gold ore is the hardest um, resource to, to produce so getting this character up if you're wanting to do an ore production is probably where you're going to start in the beginning of the game is getting this character to gold and as high of a rank as possible so stone production death knight you don't get him until a little a little ways into the game but it does have that that stone production as well so so far we have two heroes for stone production and we have two heroes for ore production all right so for so far for stone and ore we have 300 percent production increase worth of heroes okay stone produ or wood production another one now s wood production is also at 300 percent total this is all f this is all free to play excuse me okay so we have oath keeper here interesting he goes up to 225 percent who is the other hero that had the food production who was it there was another hero so I skip past okay here we go so 225 percent food production now this this is nuts this is some like I I don't I don't know why they scaled food production up so high cuz food produces faster than any other resource although you do use it more especially when you're training troops because oh um, there's only two troop types for each type of resource that they require and there's usually one resource that they don't need uh, for each troop type but every troop type needs food so that's probably why uh, but as you can see the other heroes maxed out had a total of 150 percent whereas food production has 225 percent so between elementalist and oath keeper we have 450 percent food production increase with just heroes okay so there's a lot to get and there's a lot of strategy with raising these heroes in a certain order or a certain pattern like you can you can manipulate your castles to do what you want as early as possible and I don't think a lot of people realize that in the beginning of the game 
they're going through and they're they're just upgrading everything they possibly can to get might quickly you know uh, to get everything quickly and they I guess they don't stop to realize what they need to go for and as you see all of my heroes that I've gotten from the cha uh, from the um, challenge events from the stage events so they're all white because I'm free to play and I don't spend money so um, as far as like war using them for uh, sending with your troops for armies for like attacking sorry I have an itch uh, so as far as attacking or breaking down walls uh, your best heroes for breaking down walls are going to be um, prima donna and incinerator because they both have siege engine attack boost 50 percent and 50 percent but if you get even further as free to play if you can look at Rose. Rose has army attack. This also applies to siege, okay? So you can use Rose Knight and Bomb and Goblin both. Bomb and Goblin uh, for that army attack. So with Incinerator and Prima Donna, you get a total of 100 attack for siege. Although if you were to replace them with Rose Knight and Bomb and Goblin you would only get 40 percent total but if you have the research unless you're trying to take down a the wall of a Titan like you don't need a crap ton of of siege damage okay so usually just sending Rose and Bomb and Goblin in a march is usually good enough for the siege damage but if you're really struggling, then you can send all four if you need to. Um, so these uh, Rose Knight and Bomb and Goblin can be used just for just about everything in terms of attacking and giving damage boost to all of your uh, all of your armies. But if you're trying to do like a, a war account with like an infantry. Um, like it, like pure infantry. Uh, what, what do they call that? Uh, infantry blast account. If that's what you're wanting to do, like primarily for the account, then I suggest using C Squire and either. Uh, so you want to start out with either Rose Knight or Bomb and Goblin as your leader because you're. If you send your leader, it's going to hit harder, right? Because of all of your talents and your gear. But if you make Rose Knight or Bomb and Goblin your leader, you get that automatic 20% army attack, okay? So you're going to get a 20% 20, 20 attack instead of just throwing some random hero as leader or using one of the four infantry heroes that actually have infantry boost, all right? So if you did that, then you'd be one hero short and you'd still have to send either Rose or Bomb and Goblin for a little bit of kick a little bit of an increase so I like to use either Rose or Bob and Goblin as my leader just because I can send them in any March because they're always contributing something to the army with damage so um, as far as infantry blast uh, C Squire has infantry attack um, Demon Slayer has infantry attack 30 percent I think they're all 30 percent 30 30 um, you also have you no know, death knight's cab right yeah he's a cab hero so I'm missing one here so sea squire demon slayer oh soul forger here here he is so he's got another 30 percent attack boost okay so there's one, two, three, four heroes that deal damage to, or that give extra damage to infantry. And then you also have Oathkeeper that gives another 30% infantry attack. So there's five heroes for you to give 
an infantry attack boost to your infantry troops. So if we have four heroes with 30%, three times four is 12, so that's 120%, plus the 20 from either Rose Knight or Bomb and Goblin, which would give you 140% extra attack damage for your infantry troops. And if you combine that with talents, research, and gear, you can deal a lot of damage. That's how a lot of Titans will will be able to do like a like a 900% um, infantry attack or you know something like that, some crazy. That's how they do those blasts. Is they have they they basically stack all of this damage together with jewels and and um, talents, research heroes and gear like that that's how they do it and there are some uh, pay to play heroes that have um, infantry attack as well so uh, maybe even increased infantry attack I don't know I haven't looked let's see if we can find one that's that's cavalry let's see if we can find an infantry hero marks max army or I can't talk today army attack Another cav. Range. Infantry. Okay, so this guy is infantry. So even at gold, he still gives 30%. But he also has army max HP and, and defense, which defense does add a little bit. But as you can see, though, like some of this pay-to-play stuff can be better. But... We're talking about free to play here. So, uh, as far as like range, now I've noticed that range has um, less heroes for damage. I don't know exactly why, but range does have less damage than or less damaging heroes than infantry. So whenever I do a full infantry march, I use Rose Knight. And I use Bomb and Goblin as that fourth or that fifth filler, okay? Because there's only three free-to-play heroes that deal range damage. And they are Tracker, which gives 30%. Death Archer, which gives another 30%. And Snow Queen, who also gives 30%. There aren't any other range... Uh, heroes that give range damage okay and I think that's because range are always the last to be hit in any scenario because of the just the way they are if you you know because they don't run forward they're range so I think that's why it's done that way but it's still a decent amount of damage really because you have 90 percent plus Bomb and Goblin, which is 110, and then 130 with Rose Knight. So you're, you're getting 130%, whereas the Infantry Blast would get 150%. So it's only 20% less, but if you're doing it against Cav, you're still going to have a huge advantage if you're blasting Cavalry with 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 range. So like it, it's going to make a difference, okay? Uh, last but not least is Cavalry. And Cavalry kind of got the short end of the stick. And I think this is why a lot of Cav players, like Cavalry players, are usually pay to play. Is because Cavalry is really powerful against a lot of newer players that don't have the uh, more than just the starter infantry phalanx. Because in order to change your front line, you have to either go range or cavalry phalanx. So I think that's why cavalry is set the way it is, is so that people, if they want to get an advantage against the newbies with uh, infantry phalanx, or even just the um, the the uh, the solo traps that are usually using infantry phalanx is to use cavalry and the good the best way to get cavalry damage is uh, there is some cavalry like pay to 
uh, free to play gear like that that's a thing like you you can get free to play gear for cavalry and there's actually good chunks of it like good amounts of damage that you can get for uh, with free to play gear for cavalry damage um, but as far as heroes go and ja uh, jewels for your gear I ha I've been playing for almost three years and I've noticed that Cal except for one of my alts that gets tons of cavalry jewels for some reason it's just a lucky account I guess all of my other accounts the cavalry jewel is the hardest attack jewel to get like it is the hardest to find hardest to drop from jewel chests from uh, from ad uh, admin and uh, guild quests like it is the hardest item or the hardest jewel to get uh, as far as the three troop type or the four troop type attack jewels, all right. So cavalry attack jewels are really hard to find, except for one of my accounts that literally has a crap ton of these things, more than ev any other attack jewel. I don't know. It's just luck of the draw, I guess. But uh, it's really weird. But all my other accounts, it's hard for them to get cavalry jewels, like cavalry attack jewels. Pain in the butt. So, as far as heroes go, they really got the short end of the stick because there's only a couple of, of cavalry damaging heroes. Uh, in fact, the fifth filler, actually, there, you have to have a fourth and a fifth filler. So, my fourth filler, I use Bomb and Goblin because obviously the extra damage. And then the fifth filler is actually Death Knight because even though he doesn't have any cavalry uh, attack damage he has cavalry max HP and defense which I'm more about the the HP than defense really I could care less about the defense the max HP is second best within the three within the three stats so attack is the most powerful HP is in the middle and then defense is the is the weakest of the three stats so if I can't get attack I go for HP so that's why I use him as my fifth filler uh, my fifth filler hero for when I use um, Cav Blast so the other two that I use are uh, Night Raven gives 30% cavalry attack and Child of Light it gives 30% cavalry attack and just to show you I'm gonna go through here there aren't any other heroes that give cavalry attack alright so here's Night Raven here's Child of Light there aren't any other heroes and then the Death Knight with the uh, max cav HP there aren't any other heroes that give cav attack See, he has Cav Defense, but, like, I'd rather have Death Knight, because Death Knight has HP. There aren't any other heroes. So the only way to get Cavalry damage is to pay for it. Look, Steambot, Cav Attack. Like, there's, there's a bunch of these. Look at this. Vengeful Centaur, Cav Attack. Barbarian, Cav Attack, like it, it's it's ridiculous. Like there's so many pay-to-play heroes that have Cav Attack, but that's why if you're getting hit by a Cavalry Blast, usually it's a pay-to-play player because free-to-play can't get all of that extra damage that pay-to-play can get with Cavalry. So with Cavalry, they give us the short end of the stick, but we have a decent amount of range available, like range damage available to us as free to play. So we can counter that cavalry. All right. So don't get discouraged. It's possible you can you can counter that stuff. But I'm just going through these heroes and showing you how I use them across my multiple accounts for my war accounts, my hypers. I'm showing you the process of how I choose which heroes to upgrade first with a newer account obviously with alpha it doesn't really matter because I got them all the gold but um, 
and I got them all purple two stars. So, um, I thought this video would be helpful for you guys, especially after someone mentioned it, because they they explained to me that for them to just enter the game and they play through the stages they get hero after hero after hero and the upgrade is so slow the metal gain like trying to get medals every day is so slow that it is overwhelming and when you go to attack and it says hero 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 slot you know there's a bunch of heroes stuff everywhere you use heroes of coliseum you use them in attacks uh, use them on your wall and it's it's so overwhelming of which heroes to use and they're like well if I upgrade this one I can get the stone hyper or the the stone but if I upgrade this one over here I can get army attack but if I upgrade this one I get you know wall defense uh, wall you know trap damage whatever and so people end up bouncing around upgrading their heroes because they don't know what to use so uh, my advice to you after do after going through this my advice to you is to decide what you want to do with your account first do you want it to be a hyper do you want it to be a war account anything you do you need to realize is going to take you months to do it months of getting on uh, logging in every day and doing the upgrades constantly draining your stamina and your energy with hunting like you're going to be constantly emptying every resource that fills up no matter what kind of resource it is you're going to be emptying everything out that regenerates over time because if you don't and it caps then you're wasting your time like you're missing out on on a uh, loot you're missing out on stuff that you can benefit from all of it so um, as far as upgrades uh, with like research and and uh, construction there are a couple of heroes for that um, we're gonna go through them one of them is let's see let's start with construction if I remember this right Sage of Storms has 20% construction so they don't add a a lot of construction and research but it does help uh, at a lower level like it it helps it does uh, so I believe Scarlet Bolt also has yes construction speed 20% was there another one I feel like there was three let me look it might just be the two some of this stuff is hard to remember sometimes when you have so much information floating around in your head. Wall defense. Okay, so Trickster has research speed, 25%. But Trickster you won't get until like mid-game. Like, And whenever I say mid-game or early game or late game, uh, I'm referring to the time span between castle level 1 and castle level 25 because this is like that's your your starting period and that period is anywhere between like six months to a year depending on how often you log in and I suggest when you're that young of an account logging in three times a day every day because cargo ship refreshes uh, four times a day and every six hours and since most people sleep for eight hours you're only going to be awake for three of those trades all right, it's like three of those refreshers, and the cargo ship is how you get your bag refilled or restocked or increased. That's the other than hunting and getting those little those little cards of like ten thousand um, resources or uh, two hundred thousand resources. Uh, the cargo ship is how you're going to be converting your like your produced resources that's up in the up in the top corner that's usually right here all of these that pile up and you use them in the cargo ship it converts them into your bag whether it's the same resource or you're converting them to a different resource um, cargo ships important so um, getting those logins is 
uh, important check your check-in times make sure you check in at, at morning when you wake up and try to check in uh, before you go to bed and if you can check in around lunchtime if you're sitting there eating your 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 lunch try to try to check in get those cargo ship trades because it's it's going to help a lot so um, let's keep looking through here I think it's just the two. There's two, if I remember right, there's two research and then there's two construction heroes. I thought there were two research heroes. Excuse me for a second. Ugh. <laughs> late spring early summer allergies house dust you know whatever I got a bunch of reptiles behind me I'm sure you guys have seen them in my videos they don't they don't really cause dust but their beddings like Aspen I don't know sometimes it gets to me sometimes it doesn't so I guess Strixer is the only like free to play research boost boosting hero that you can that you can get because I don't I don't see any others and some people will say watcher get watcher you can get watcher for free have you ever tried to get watcher have you ever tried to get watcher let me tell you about watcher you get these little things called uh, 24 hour challenge event, hell event, solo event. Watcher rarely shows up. Most of the time people don't even bother checking those because they change every couple of hours and most people are busy and they do uh, maintenance and, or uh, upkeep on their castles when they log in. Most people don't bother to check those and on the rare occasion that you do find watcher or was that the the dragon guy in those events you better have days upon days upon days weeks months probably months months of speed ups saved up and whenever i say months i mean like speed up time like your total time that your speed ups can speed up like months were like months okay so you're going to need thousands at least hundreds if not thousands of speed ups to do the research the training the, the stuff because how demoralizing is it to save up that stuff for like a month or two and then go and try one of those events and get this close to completing it and you deplete all of your gems all of your resources everything trying to finish that and you don't but but what if you do what if you get it let me tell you what you get you get five medals five okay that's still enough to get watcher you know do it twice and you get watcher okay cool what is your uh, what does your research speed look like with watcher when he's uh, silver or gray white whatever you want to call it I bet you it's below five percent is that worth it no it's not okay but it's a start and you just do it every time and you get watcher right yeah you get watcher what does his research speed look at like when it's a, f a golden hero Let's see if I can find him I only have three medals and that's why I got three I didn't get five I got three 
me see if I can look at this guy. Battle skills. Here we go. Oh, it's training speed. Wow, I feel stupid now. <laughs> wow. Oh, is it the dragon guy that gives the research speed? Is it the dragon guy? What does this guy give? This guy's more viable to get, really. But even that is going to be hard. Not as hard. Let's see if I can find the dragon guy in here. So I can show you what I'm talking about. So Watcher has the training speed. Chaos Dragon, Chaos Dragon, Chaos Dragon. Where is he at? Chaos Dragon. Chaos Dragon, Chaos Dragon. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to be in here today. I was hoping he would for my example, but he's not. Okay, so we'll use Watcher instead because Chaos Dragon only gives 20% same as Trickster, right? So we're going to look at Watcher. So, moving on, we're going to look at training speed, because everyone's like, oh, you can get training speed, you know. Yeah. You can get training speed. Training speed. 20%. <sighs> infirmaries. Max infirmaries. No, max manners, sorry. Max manners give 20%. Or is it 25%? They give, I think they give 20% training speed. Same as this guy. But this is that gold. This is that gold, guys. So you bust your ass for Watcher. Every single time you find him. Alright? Yeah, I'll get him eventually. I'll get him. You ever see a free-to-play player with Tier 5? Let me let me tell you what I mean about this. So you complete for each time you complete the challenge events or whatever for Watcher medals, you get three. That's not cr that's not anything. It's crumbs. It's microscopic crumbs. It's flakes. In order to get him to silver. You need 10 medals. Oh yeah, but that's only like four events. Four rare events that rarely show up. Four. To get him to green, you need 20 or 25. I think, I think 20. You need 20 medals. Okay, so that's eight. Eight, eight events. Okay, cool. From from zero medals, that's a total of eight events. No. No, that's not true, is it? No. Because once you do four events and get them to silver, now your medals drop to back to zero. So instead of just four or eight, you're actually talking about twelve events. Twelve rare events that might show up once a month. Just to get them to green for free to play, that could possibly take you a year. Even if I were to have successfully completed every one of Watcher's events that's popped up since I started, I still wouldn't have them at blue. You know why? Because blue requires 50 medals alone. Alright, we already established just to get them from zero medals to green, like non-existent to green is 12. Imagine, what, what, is, what is 50, let me pull up my calculator, 50 divided by 3 is 16.6, so basically 17, sorry, 17 events. So 17 plus 12 is what, 29? No, 39. 
29. I was right. 29. 29 rare events. How old do you think you're going to be when you finally get Watcher to gold? Because uh, purple needs 100, and then gold needs 150 medals. So if we take 150 plus 100 plus another 50 plus 20 plus 10, 330 medals, all right? Divide that by 3 is 110 Watcher events. 110. And let's say, let's be generous. Let's say 3 every three times a month watcher shows up which i don't believe that at all because i rarely see chaos dragon or watcher in those damn events so 110 divided by three so even if he shows up three times a month and you somehow magically have enough resources to finish the watcher events every time it'll still take you 37 months. That's more than three years. So, everyone says, Watcher's viable for training speed. Chaos Dragon is viable for free-to-play. It's not. So don't let people BS you, because it's not possible. And stepping away from this conversation for a second I think it's funny how I went from hero uh, video to rant but everyone tells me get watcher get chaos dragon it's useless what is, what is it what good is it gonna do me at why at silver at silver metal at silver badge like what is, what is that gonna do for me nothing it's useless. 1%. 1.25. 1 1%. 1 That's useless. Not worth my time. Not worth my stress. Not worth my struggle. The struggle. Like, it's not worth it. I don't even... Like, I'd, I'd have better luck achieving unlocking tier 5 and training tier 5 before I get Chaos Dragon and and Watcher for as free to play. Like everyone that has those at gold, they're going to tell you, "Oh, I just I did I did the events." You lie. They lie. They lie. And even if it's true, it's because they're buying speed ups. Like they're buying packs to get the speed ups so they can complete those. They're not free to play. They may say, oh, I'm free to play. I have Watcher to gold. Lies. Don't believe it. So, as far as training speed, I don't think any, none of the free to play heroes have training speed. So you're going to have to rely on your, um, on your manners, on your research, and on your um, talents for that. Because not there's there's not even free to play gear that has training speed. It's all pay it's all pay to play. Like you have to you have to pay for it. But uh, let's see what what have we covered? We've covered war stats, uh, production stats, uh, and we've also covered research, construction, and training speed. I think that's pretty much it. Well, not necessarily. There's actually a little bit more. Because there's also the wall heroes. Like traps. Trap damage. And everyone's like, well, I don't I don't I don't do wall stuff. I don't I don't upgrade my wall. I don't upgrade this. I you know, I don't walls trash. Say what you want about the wall. But when I have some Eighty mil might player trying to solo me, even if my troops are completely dead or wiped out, he still can't get past my wall. I've had, I've had big players send me three marches, 
no w without having any siege they still can't get past my wall like say what you want about the wall guys but the wall is useful until it breaks and then the wait time for the repairs a pain in the butt but is still useful like the wall is still useful so let's let's look at the heroes for the uh, traps and stuff so I'm going to show you the heroes that I use for my wall these are the heroes I use for my wall when your wall breaks the heroes that are on your wall is what fights with your army with your troops against the invader against the the attacker the against the enemy you all of your heroes do not fight only the ones on your wall so i have rose knight i pretty much have all ranged except for rose knight but rose knight gives an army attack and so does bob and goblin so I get a little bit of attack for all of my troops with these two. And I'll explain this. Be, be, the reason be behind, excuse me, I burped. The reason behind uh, these ranged heroes is because your ranged troops will fire and attack enemies from over top of the wall. If you watch anyone attack your wall or fight your wall, you'll see that your archers shoot over the wall okay so increasing that attack damage is good this is why I use these heroes and the reason I don't have like tracker up here uh, and I have black crow is more simple than you realize what does tracker have ranged attack increase range defense or production what does black crow have range max HP range defense trap attack trap attack yeah trap attack so if that wall breaks my range units still have HP but I have I have Black Crow up there for the silent kill for the extra damage with my ranged troops. Okay. But that's only if the wall breaks is when the hero the range heroes fight. But the trap attack is also important. So if we go look at Death Archer, trap attack if we look at where where is he bomb and goblin trap attack trap HP starting to see a pattern guys and then who was the other oh right snow queen trap defense 75 percent and ranged attack so my wall is set up so that I can get range damage firing over the wall and I can get a little bit of extra trap damage so the troops that hit my wall can't constantly hit my wall for the full duration of the attack because they're being attacked and they're being killed so that's what I use on my wall and those are the really good heroes to use for the trap attack and the range damage because you want a, you you want as much range damage as you can get up there but you also want trap attack more like you want trap attack up there and then once you run out of trap attack heroes then you fill them in with range damage for your troops that fire over the wall so that's I think that's pretty much it for this
for this uh, video here. Um, I think I went over just about everything uh, as far as the passive skills. Um, honestly, I would talk about the uh, energy and the you know energy max energy and the regeneration boosters, but no no one really makes accounts for strictly um, hunting like I've I've seen some people dabble in it with their alts but no no one's ever gone like full on I just I don't I don't see anyone doing it so that's pretty much it for like beginner builds or like what you're doing for your build when you start out for heroes I uh, hope you guys learned something today don't worry about um, Watcher or Chaos Dragon unless you plan on spending money because it's a pipe dream for free to play. Like it, it's a pipe dream. So um, I guess I'll just see you on the next one, guys. Peace out.